All right, welcome back. Let's uh, continue our discussion on uh, the life and times of uh, the former, uh, or rather the late Zimbabwean opposition leader, Morgan Tsangare. And with me now is uh, Professor David Moore, who is a professor of development studies and also a political analyst at the University of Johannesburg. Prof, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thanks. Now, from what we've heard, we've heard uh, our politicians in South Africa in Parliament yesterday talking about Morgan Tsangare, and you've also uh, talked about him just before uh, the news at 7. It, clearly, he was... A brave man, someone who did unthinkable things, someone who tried to unseat President Robert Mugabe over two decades. Right, that's for sure. And I think that feeling is coming back. I mean, you saw the thousands of people on the streets and the, the, the speeches here. Um, you know, Julius Malema is not saying that he was a puppet of the imperialists and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, I think, you know, w w w we have to think also of, of some of the problems. I mean, the Morgan Shangarai didn't um, retire after the 2013 election. Perhaps he should have, and the succession issue could have been solved by now. Um, so we're leaving, we're left with all sorts of conspiracy tales about the fights. But I think that's coming together. And you can see that Nelson Chamisa looks like he's going to be the next president of the MDC. And there's a real connection there with, with the people that mm -hmm. he seems to have. Because that's what I wanted to ask you, Prof, as to... Um, Tsongarai's death, what does it mean to uh, the opposition in terms of politics there in, 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 in Zimbabwe? I mean, with the current sort of divisions that we're seeing now, do you think they'll be able to sort of make it during the elections in July? Well, I think they'll have to come together with this MDC and the alliance, which was formed, you know, a, couple, a few months ago. Um, Tendai BT, Welshman Nube, um, and their former MDC people, for various reasons, fell out with Morgan Shangarai and other members of the party. Um, it looks like they could come back together. That would again mean incredible issues for Chamisa himself and for the next Congress, which should maybe even in March, because the elections might be coming up in July. Also creates interesting issues for Munangagwa, mm -hmm. the president. Uh, who has tensions of his own with his relationship with the military. So if he wants to push the democratic agenda against the militaristic tendencies which are coming, there's going to have to be free and fair elections. And there will be a temptation, I think, to start making some deals with the MDC, with the MDC. whatever the MDC looks like. Yeah. But the divisions within the MDC itself, mm. do you think it will sort of give an advantage to ZANU-PF and President Monangago during the elections if they're not sorted out, of course, on time? Yeah. No, no, it could very, very well do that. Um, a, a, a split opposition won't help, uh, won't help that democratic project very much. Um, ZANU-PF itself is, is, is not united. There's still the the G40 tendencies around there, so they have to be worried about as well. One would hope, although I, I think the temptation would be there, for some MDC people to try and link up with Joyce Majuru, the former vice president who kind of got kicked out a while ago. Um, it's going to be a very, very interesting few weeks or, or months as the opposition tries to reinvent itself and try and get back that, that vision which was there at the end of the 90s and the early 2000s to rejuvenate the, the opposition and, and take, take democracy as So we're likely to see a coalition government? It's possible. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of the family feuds, we know that uh, uh, Morgan Tsongarai will be buried in his home village of Buhera this morning, but we have been getting reports that there are politics within, within the family as well. Yeah, these are tension-ridden times. I mean, when somebody's dying and it takes a long, long time for them to die, I mean, it's a terrible fight with, with, with colon cancer, um, the tensions in the family are going to be exacerbated. And it's kind of a shame that they become involved with the politics of, of, of the party. And, of course, everybody thinks, oh, is ZANU-PF working with some parts of the family and what's, you know... What's, 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 what's going on at that level? So conspiracy theories come mm -hmm. up, you know, the visit that Munangagwa made to Morgan Shangarai in his house in January 5th. Everybody's wondering who was really behind this. So, but I think I understand that um, the, 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 the most recent widow <laughs> and, 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 and Morgan Shangarai's mother will go to the funeral. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think with time, the, the, the real tensions and the stress disappears and people realize we should, family should keep out of politics, True. politics should keep out of the family, and we can go forward with a, a united front.
All right. Prof, we'll leave it at that for now. Let's uh, wait and see what happens going forward more so into the elections in July. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much to Professor David Moore from the University of Johannesburg discussing with us the late Morgan Swangarai, of course, looking back um, at the life and times of this uh, opposition leader.